It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. This Zoom call that I'm responding to is the perfect example on why critical race theory should never, ever come to our classrooms. Now this video call that I'm responding to comes from a series of teachers in a Zoom call from Oregon and pretty much they're talking about their goals and objectives when it comes down to critical race theory as well as the students there. In my videos, of course, I talked about how to be anti-racist and in terms about like this sort of critical race theory. So here's a good example, at least to me, on why people should be really furious about the clips I'm going to show you guys. And so, without further hesitation, let's watch the clip and let's react. Yes, we have a few panelists today that will engage in some conversation and uh, let's get us started. I will ask you to introduce yourself. So I'm going to name you. And once I name you, uh, please state your pronouns. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm Josh Porter. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Hi, I'm Caitlin Everett. My pronouns are she, her. Hello, everyone. My name is Gretchen. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm a first grade dual language teacher here at Barnes Elementary. And I, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. Hola. I'm Marcelo Ulibarri. I am a kindergarten teacher at Taloa Hubert Park, and my pronouns are ella, she, her, hers. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cynthia Moffitt. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm Catherine Watkins, eighth grade humanities teacher at Cedar Park Middle School, and my pronouns are she, her, we, and us. It is so incredibly cringy how this whole entire video just starts out with the teachers just giving out their pronouns and stuff. However, most people, at least 99% of the whole entire population, identify as the same sex, gender, or whatever as they are born with. So, the likeliness of somebody using some sort of pronouns that's different than theirs is like super, super low. So not only does it come across as pandering, but it's also a waste of time, because honestly, like, who really cares about the whole entire concept about pronouns. I think the, the lane that white women and white folks in general need to be in right now is talking to other white folks about white supremacy. Um, so I think for sure, you know, I think, I mean, one of the issues is we don't have enough black and brown teachers to teach in black and brown schools and have that be enough teachers for black and brown schools, right? 80% of teachers are white women. Um, so, so that's already a problem, but, but if, if we could, if white teachers would stay in white districts and push back against, you know, so much of the white supremacy that we see in our schools, um, I, I absolutely think that that's the work that, that white folks need to be doing. This clip right here is pretty much atrocious. Here we have this woman outright stating that black people cannot learn from white people and so therefore we need more black teachers for black students and to move away all the white people because apparently black people cannot learn from white people. That has to be the most racist comment I probably heard in a long time. As a matter of fact, so racist that it's almost like something that the KKK could have thought of. Now, in the process of education, right, it's obvious that every single student has different needs when it comes down to the subject, right? And so sometimes they need some sort of special needs or whatever. However, a person's race should not be the qualification on why a kid cannot learn something or not. When I was growing up in school, I had teachers from different backgrounds, from different genders, male, female, black, white, and guess what? The main reason why I learned from those teachers was not necessarily because of their skin color. How I learned stuff like math or English or Spanish or these other topics is because they interest me, they help me out, and gave their time and effort to help other students. And so to sit here and say that students cannot learn something just because of their skin color is perhaps the most backwards thing 
I have heard in a long time. Racism originates with and is perpetuated by white people. Learning Spanish from a white woman. I wish I could go back and tell my students not to learn power or correctness from this white woman. I would tell them to stand in their own power. White isn't right. We're deconstructing our emotions around acknowledging our whiteness and white privilege through the lens of grief and the process of grief. We talked about mourning our white morality. I'm holding myself accountable to this journey. Part of my accountability is to continue to struggle and grapple with my internalized white supremacy. Dismantling white supremacy in society looks like dismantling in my heart first. It means I'm not going to teach Spanish. Accountability is ongoing because there is no end to the process. I find it so extremely hilarious that this woman said that teaching Spanish is a form of white supremacy. I have no idea why so many of my countrymen say that basically, you know, Spanish-speaking people are only the dark people. Well, that's not true. That is not true in the slightest. Now, everybody knows about the fall of the Roman Empire. And so pretty much, of course, during that time of period, right, there were various different vulgar languages that were developed from Latin. Of course, it was like Italian, Catalan, Portuguese, and of course, the most famous one example, French and also Spanish. Now, Spanish, of course, was unified as the country language for Spain after, of course, like Queen Isabella, Isabel, excuse me, as well as the crown of Aragon married together. And of course, it was spread to the Americas during that time period. It had, like, of course, a huge influence on South America, Central America, and North America, as well as parts of the Caribbean. And so naturally, because of the spread of the Spanish language, many people in the Americas speak Spanish, just like many people in the Americas speak English, because the influence of the English people, and that's why so many people speak Portuguese and French, because of the Portuguese and French influence from the Congress. And so, it's so strange that this woman is saying that teaching Spanish is white supremacy, when nationality, of course, we know that most Spaniards are white people. And so, Spanish is a European language to sit here, of course, say that you cannot teach a language because of a skin color, that, my friends, is racist. Like, to me at least, if somebody were to teach a different language, it does not matter their skin color. If the person is fluent in that language, is good enough in that language, then obviously that person should teach the students that language. The most qualified person should be the one teaching. The fifth, and I would say most, uh, most controversial, is the notion that racism is permanent, that the racial poles of white on black uh, are, um, are permanent, and they're not permanent because of objective reasoning. They're not permanent because whites are superior to blacks or uh, because blacks occupy some uh, uh, distinct role at the bottom. It's because whites are fixated on blackness and anti-blackness, and, uh, and they orient different other racial groups uh, in the middle of white and black in order to, pr to protect their own superiority. In other words, racism is something that white people could decide to give up. They could change the social institutions, they could change the way that they, uh, they're anti-blackness, but they won't. So critical race theory recognizes choice, but also recognizes a bit of uh, permanence in that choice. This guy seemed to not make up his own mind when it comes down to, of course, permanent racism. Now first, he states that racism is, of course, permanent for white people. Then he claims that white people at any given moment can stop being racist. So what is it, man? Because it's like a self-contradiction right there. You can't sit there and say that, hey, white people could permanently be racist and then later say, well, geez, white people can also change their mind at any given moment. That makes no sense in the slightest. It's sort of funny, this sort of idea of evolve or dissolve, because in this video already, I already demonstrated at least two examples in which they're actually dissolving. 
by a lot. Because they're saying that we need to push white teachers in favor for black teachers because black people cannot learn from white teachers. And then they also stated, of course, that they cannot teach Spanish because they're white. So, it seems to me that the people in this video are the ones going back in time. They're the ones dissolving, they're the ones regressing in a period of time in which people would actually be happy, like the people at the KKK and the Jim Crow laws. This is the type of stuff that my grandma fought against. She was a teacher, she was like in an all-white school during that time period. But guess what? Because of her skills, it left a huge impression on the students and on the parents and the next generation to kill. So to sit here and see all these teachers gathered together in this sort of Zoom call, trying to dissolve all the progress that we made so far as a society, is really sad and very much regressive. Um, I'm going to say something that's not nice and not sweet, but it's true. If you're not evolving into an anti-racist educator, you're making yourself obsolete in this field of profession. Um, our district is only getting browner and browner with our children. And so if, you know, obviously you can't change your melanin, all right, but you can change your mind so that you can actually function in a, a district that is full of BIPOC children. So if you're being resistant, I understand that, but you're gonna have to eventually come to the light because if you're going to keep with those old views of um, colonialism, um, it's gonna lead to being fired because you're gonna be doing damage to our children, um, trauma. And so as we fire the teachers who sexually abuse our children, we will be firing the, ch the teachers who do racist things to our children and traumatize them. And while our district might not be completely on there, OEA, um, OEA is working on it, all right? NEA is working on it. And so it's just a matter of time. So it's like you either evolve or dissolve. You've got to start walking with us. So what do you guys think about some of the video clips that you guys have seen? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.